Hey guys, what's up? It's Carl, and I've been lucky enough to use the iPhone 12 now for the past couple days, almost a week, and I think most people can grab them in stores now. And if you're on the fence still, if you're eyeing, say, the iPhone 11, maybe you even have this device, is the iPhone 12 worth the upgrade? I think so many people ask me that question, so in this video, I will compare two of these devices last year's 11 versus this year's 12. And the first thing in any sort of comparison or review is the price. How much do these things cost? And the 12 starts at $799. And I'll throw up Canadian dollars as well as that's where I'm from. Just keep in mind our exchange rate isn't the greatest all the time. It's slightly confusing though because on the Apple website it says the iPhone 12 starts at $699. That's for the iPhone 12 mini, which is actually coming out later this month slash November. It's $100 more for the standard 6.1 inch and that sadly still only comes with a base storage option of 64 gigs. If you do grab the Pro model, at least it's 128 gigs, but it's also more expensive. And the thing that we've all also heard, Apple no longer includes a charging brick inside of the box. And if you're making the upgrade from a device two, three, four years ago, you probably have the standard Apple charger USB-A to Lightning. And that sadly won't work with the cable which is provided in the box as that's USB-C to lightning. You can obviously buy an extra power brick, it's an extra $20. And weirdly enough though, it's the same type of charger that you would get in the iPhone 11 box. And I kind of go back and forth on it because yes, Apple is helping save the environment, but in reality, most people don't have USB-C charging brakes. Most people looking to upgrade have a device three, four, five years that are old now and are now stuck spending an extra $20 on a charging brick. The next thing about price, which I think is actually really important, Apple has dropped the price on the iPhone 11 to $599. So that's a $200 difference between both of these, which I think is pretty huge. And that makes the 11 a lot more compelling, especially when you bring up both devices. They have a very similar form factor. Placing them side by side, they are almost identical. The 12 is just slightly smaller, I believe 11% smaller. They flatten out the edges on the 12, so it's a bit boxier. I think it's personal preference. You get used to what you're holding. I personally prefer the boxy designs. I like the hard edges, whereas my girlfriend prefers the round edges on her 11. Up front, we've got the same display size, so 6.1 inches. We still have a very large notch on both. We are switching though from Liquid Retina over to their Super Retina XDR display. That essentially means we've got a higher pixel density, and to me, the screen is a lot sharper. I don't think most people though will really notice that difference. It also gets a lot brighter at up to 1200 nits, but I think the key feature that is missing that would make it an instant sell is a higher refresh rate. So we are still stuck at 60 hertz, so the overall speed is actually very similar. Speaking about speed performance wise, the silicone on the inside, we do have the new A14 Bionic versus the A13 of of course the iPhone 11. And although the benchmarks show how superior the iPhone 12 is in honest day-to-day -day use when I'm interacting with my device, scrolling through social media, playing a couple of games, they feel so similar. And I think that's the problem with smartphones these days. The changes or the improvements are so incremental in performance. Maybe loading times are a half second faster, but unless you've got both devices side by side, I honestly don't think you'll be able to tell the difference between either device. Around the rest of the device is actually very similar, so they both have glass backs, and if you want the satin finish, you do need to lean over to the Pro models. Maybe color is possibly an option that would sway you in one direction. The product red though on the 12, I've had a lot of questions on this. It isn't exactly as dark or as deep as other product reds that they've had but I do still enjoy feeling the hard aluminum or even stainless on the Pro. If that's the case and you wanna be more adventurous, dbrand has some skins. It'll still keep the back nice and protected and you can rock essentially any color combo that you want and they're only around 10 bucks, so you can swap them out easier than you would with say a case. And in case you were wondering about MagSafe, it technically still works over on the iPhone 11s. It just doesn't have the same magnet, so it will still charge your device. But of course, on the iPhone 12 models, you do get that cool notification that your device is charging. There must be a little NFC chip built in, and the magnets obviously work way better. And one of the last big areas to compare is on the back, which are the cameras. And although they seem very similar, we've got a two lens setup on both. We still have the 12 megapixel ultra wides, which have always been my favorites. But on the iPhone 12, we have a brand new 12 megapixel. So same megapixel count wide sensor. 
And off of my initial testing, there's definitely an improvement over on the 12. Dynamic range seems to be better. Color reproduction is also a bit more accurate, but I'll let you guys be the judge. I don't know if that's a justified upgrade cost for that slight of a difference, $200. I'm still honestly very happy with both. And that is pretty much the big, big differences between the iPhone 11 and 12. Battery life, you're still looking at around a day and a day and a half depending on usage. The 12 has a slightly better water resistance rating. I think you can go a bit deeper in water and for a longer period, but once again, not that big of a difference. And honestly, if you already own the iPhone 11, I see no reason to make the upgrade to the 12. And with the price drop on the 11, I think this becomes way more of a compelling device to grab unless you are a real pixel peeper and really will notice that screen resolution difference if you need that extra improvement on the camera. But if you are that kind of person, I think you'll already be looking over to the Pro model. But yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on the new iPhone 12. If you do end up upgrading, if you're coming from the 6, 7, 8, you will be very happy with this device. If you're a person like me and all of those things that I mentioned matter to you, I'm personally gonna be rocking the 12 Pro Max when that comes into the studio. So if you're interested in seeing all things Apple coverage, any other videos you wanna see covered on the channel, let me know down below in the comments and hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I hope to catch you in one of my next ones or in one of my vlogs. Peace.